I first heard about, I ever heard about the Greenwood Loop Theater back when I was in seventh grade, uh, seventh or eighth grade. Uh, my first play was here with your good boy Charlie Brown, and I've been a part ever since. I went on to do Dearly Departed, Best Little Whorehouse in Texas, Noises Off. Uh, well, not Noises Off. Uh, no Time for Sergeants. That was it. Uh, Beauty and the Beast. And this is my first play in six years uh, here, so feels like home. Sydney Fortier, the future Jackie Robinson of films, was born the 24th of February, 1927, during a visit his parents made to Florida, legally, to sell tomatoes they had grown on their farm in the Bahamas. He grew up on Cat Island, so poor that they didn't even own dirt, he has said. Neglected by his family, my father would sit on the shore and conjure up the kinds of worlds that were on the other side and what I do in them. The play is about uh, the theory that there are six degrees between everyone you meet, six degrees uh, between any, you and anyone in the world. And this particular play, there's this young man who sort of bamboozles his way confidently into the homes of uh, upscale New Yorkers, I think to show them that they're not so different after all. There's a particular scene where the two parents, or the parent groups rather, of the of the kids say to each other, why have we never met? You know, all we have in common is our kids went to boarding school. And I think that this is, uh, this story kind of shows that people in your life are closer to you than you think, you know, or people that you should meet are closer to you than you think if you just pay attention. Everything is somebody else's. Not your children, not your life. You're right. Got me there. I think audiences would need to see this play, uh, not one, but they would need to because it's relatable. Um, I think it would, wake, it would more so awaken your consciousness to uh, everyone around you, uh, to just pay attention, to just always be mindful because you never know who you're going to meet and you never know who you're going to need. So um, I think that that would be a good reason why this play would be so important and because it touches on so many issues, um, race, structure, uh, social class, things like that, um, that no one really talks about uh, directly. I know all about your son. What about my son? Not that little shit that lives here. Your other son. Your secret son. The Negro son that you deny. How did I get involved with the Greenwood Little Theater? Oh, goodness gracious. I guess I was um, a young teenager and um, Kate Hummel said, you have to be Prince Dauntless if I'm going to do Once Upon a Mattress. So I said, okay. This play is about deception. This play is about, ooh, the depths of psychology. This play is about human nature. This play is about a yearning to want to believe something is true so badly that you will ignore facts just to hold on to that one belief that it could possibly be real. Trent Conway, he's an interesting young man. It seems as though he's never really found his way in life, but he knows a lot of people who have found their way in life, so he likes to latch on to them. And he's tried to fill in some of the voids in his life by coming across young men from time to time. And one of them happened to really love his address book, full of all the wealthiest people from New York and New England. And Trent Conway could not hold on to that address book. I'll go through this address book, and I'll tell you about family after family. You'll never not fit in again. I will make you the most sought-after young man in the East. People would want to see this play because it is both comedic at times, it is dramatic at times, and for everyone from every walk of life, there are moments that will take you out of your comfort zone. It will make you leave the theater thinking about things over and over in your head, and really that's what theater is about. What's the point of coming to theater? if you don't get to escape from your normal reality and experience something you've never had before. Oh, the Greenwood Little Theater is one of the biggest assets to this community because it offers people a chance to, you know, on the actor's side of it, we can live the lives of other people and leave our own personal lives behind for a little while. 
and from the audience side of it, and I will say the audience is the most important cast member in the whole show because everything we do does not exist without the audience. The audience gets to come to the Greenwood Little Theater and they get to leave their lives behind too and envelop themselves in what we are doing on stage. I think it's one of the most interesting plays we've ever done here, really. It's, it's, um, it's just the way it's told because there, there are a lot of flashbacks. You're, there's a lot of, of in the present and, you know, in the past that kind of goes back and forth and, and uh, just, just the way it's told. And then also the message of, you know, how people can pretend to be one way and they can also be another way, which, you know, is referenced in the Kandinsky painting when it says it's painted on two slides and we flip it around for variety and that. That kind of mimics Paul and and his character. So I just think it's a real interesting play that um, has some situations in it uh, that may not be for kids, but um, it's for smaller kids. But I think it's something that everyone should see. That's why I love paintings. Cezanne, the problems he brought up are the problems that painters are still dealing with: color, structure. Those are problems. There is color in my life, but I'm not aware of any structure. He and the uh, other uh, lead character besides uh, Justin Robinson's character, uh, Paul Portier, uh, with Connie Black, who plays Weeza Kittredge, we are art dealers and we have a New York City apartment and we consider ourselves upwardly mobile and we have um, three children who are spoiled and superficial, just like we are. And uh, we... Um, we take this this uh, this this man in this this young man who pretends to be Paul Portier, and uh, we believe his story that he really is the son of, of Sidney Portier, and and uh, we we he, he cooks dinner for us, and we we believe everything he tells us, and we're just totally drawn in by him, and then he betrays us, and that's really kind of what the whole play is revolved around is his shenanigans that actually start with us. My parents were charter members, and and I got involved. When I was seven years old in 1967, this building was brand new, and uh, my mother directed the first children's play in this building, and it was called The Flying Prince, and I was the monkey. I had no lines. I just hopped around on stage and went <laughs> 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 It's about a couple in uh, New York, and they are leading their lives, and this young black man comes into their apartment one night claiming to be Sidney Poitier, and they believe him, they're taken in, and then they find out that that he's probably not Sidney Poitier's son. Attracted by youth and his talent and the embarrassing prospect of being in the movie version of Cats. And it's just the aftermath of that. I mean, they really felt feel a connection with him. And then when they find out that he's not who he says he is, they feel betrayed. But Wisa, in particular, feels very gets to feel very close to the boy. And who knows why? I mean, I don't know if she has a very strong connection with her own children. But for some reason, she and Paul just feel a connection. I was living in Inverness, and Celia Emmerich was directing Oliver and I was doing my student teaching with Joanne Crump and so you call Miss Crump about singers, needing some singers. So I came out here and did that and been involved ever since. Quality entertainment. Um, and, and that's what you hear a lot of people say that they're they're so happy that that we do have this quality of entertainment, that we have so many people that are interested and that have the um, the ability to do what they do out here, and it's been that way year after year after year. So I think we're very lucky, because I know there are some towns that, that don't have this, but um, Greenwood Little Theater has always been strong. My name is Bobby Van Devender, and I'm directing this production. This production is about a young man who presents himself to four different people and says he's the son of Sidney Poitier. He turns out not to be the son of Sidney Poitier, and the play is about what happens to him and to the people that he has tricked into thinking he is Sidney Poitier. I think they want to see it because it's real good theater. It's a, it's a drama. It's also a comedy. Uh, it's got a lot of deep issues in it, but they're handled lightly and humorously, and uh, it's just a beautiful little play. 
I play Paul Portier, Kidrich, in Six Degrees of Separation. My name is Will Perkins. I am playing in this costume the role of Trent Conway. I am Eddie Amalug, and I am playing the part of Jay Flanders Flan Kittridge. Connie Black, I'm playing Lisa Kittridge. I just want to add that I think everybody that comes to see Six Degrees of Separation will thoroughly enjoy it. Uh, there is a little adult content, so you probably want to leave the kids at home. But uh, the grown people who really enjoy theater will love Six Degrees of Separation. <laughs>